Uh, you can hear me? Okay, so we're going to be having the locusts at 12.15 and the flood at 12.30. Um, anybody? We're not going to do the, the firstborn thing. It just seems a little bit too much. Um, thank you all for being here, especially for those of you who stayed um, through the would-be fire. My understanding was that the firemen really just wanted to come to a poetry reading, and, and this was the only way they could do it. Uh, Thank you, Chard. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, the kind gentleman selling books. Uh, thank you to some of you. Charlie, it's more than 34 years, I hate to tell you. Um, we went to school 41 years ago. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, so thank you all for being here. I'm going to read a few poems from this book. Um, and I'm also going to read some, some new poems. And then I'm going to let you go to lunch. Um, because I know you, you want to go to lunch. Um, so I'll read about two and a half hours. We're, we're good. Um, well, I guess this, this is a... Uh, this title makes sense for where we are. It's called Losing My Religion. The truth is, I left it on the bus on purpose because I saw someone else's religion there and didn't want it to be lonely. The truth is, you should never begin anything with the truth is, because then people will think everything else you were saying was false. The truth is, all I wanted was this, to fall asleep with you at the bus station, still holding our coffee cups, still holding our scepters. Matinee. Today the part of love will be played by regret. Memory will be played by what if. Tragedy by the saxophonist. Silence will be played by silence. There will be no intermission. This is kind of nice as podiums go. <laughs> Maybe I chose the wrong line of work. I... This is called On Love. You can't climb on top and call yourself conqueror or straddling whip love into submission. Love wanders from sky to sky. Once or twice, I've seen it there, or felt a presence other than my own, a kind of glowing twilight makes before it tires of one place. Uh, I'm going to read a poem from yesterday, uh, which I always like to say that because then it's, a, it's an automatic disclaimer. Uh, we know that uh, things are wrong with it when it's from yesterday. Uh, I mean, which wouldn't be the case if it were the day before yesterday. It would be all worked out by then. Uh, and, and, I, and I guess what I also always say to my students is it, it's, I'm not so concerned with a poem being perfect. Um, I, I often don't feel there's only one way a poem could be. It could maybe be a few different ways. Um, and, and what's always exciting to me is just doing something new. Um, so, another one that might be relevant for the space that we're in, Lot's Wife. I always get confused. I always think it's Lot's turning back that turned her to salt. A whole pillar of it. I always think he's an Orpheus of sorts, though Orpheus was better looking and a knockout on his lute. But Lot? There's not a whole lot we can say in his favor. I have to think his wife had a name other than Lot's wife. <laughs> that she might have looked back to glimpse the life she had before him, before he offered his daughters to that mob, before what still lay ahead, Lot himself, with their daughters, Lot 
telling everyone how blameless he was and her conversion. You can see why a woman might opt to be salt over flesh, a pillar that goats or camels could lick, a stinging lot could do nothing with. Review. Sam the Bellman was extremely helpful. We loved dining at the edge of the cliff. The woman who took our coats was very pleasant and promised to give them back. Our room had a window and an adjoining room. There were people above us, and we heard every sound they made. It sounded like happiness. And when we complained to the management, nothing happened. The bed was small, and it was hard to not remember the past. The television only played detective shows, episodes in which the main young character, a woman, fell off a cliff or jumped. It was never clear. There were too many menus to choose from. The terrace was above the sea. There was a jar of clouds. We could not reach it. You all may have stayed in that place. It's on the West Coast. It was pretty nice, actually. This is called, uh, this is called something. It's not, it's not in that book, though. It's in this one. Something. Something went wrong. That's what the machine says when I call to say my paper didn't arrive. Machines are trained by people, so they're smart. They know a thing of 50 trillion. Did you miss your Sunday delivery, it asks. I did, I say. I miss everything, I say, because it's a machine and it has to listen. Or at least it has to not hang up without trying to understand why I called, which means trying to correct what was wrong. Let me see if I got this right, the voice says. You missed your Sunday paper. Yes, I say, but also I miss my childhood and fairy tales like Eden. I miss sweet Rob Roy's with strangers. I miss fabric softener and soft lighting. I'm sorry, the machine says. I'm having trouble understanding. Did you miss today's paper? Yes, I say, but that's not the half of it. Sometimes I just feel like half of me, and even that feels like too much. I'm having trouble understanding, the machine repeats. Its syllables halted as if trying to mimic an empath. I'm having trouble understanding too, I say. I I used to understand so much. Photosynthesis, the human heart. I'd even memorized the Krebs cycle, but now all I remember is lifting the golden coil of the kitchen phone to maneuver under my mother's conversations. It was like lifting the horizon. There's a silence, and the machine asks, are you still there? In a few words, please describe your issue. Where do I begin being a minimalist? Time, I say. I've got a problem with that. Also, loss and attachment. That's pretty much it. And the news in its sky blue sleeve is meant to be a distraction, isn't it, I ask? More silence, and then, you miss your mother, a voice asks. It's a human voice. Me too, she says. Uh, And 
And that is always the moment when I say I, I had a great mother. And uh, there's at least one person in this room who, who a couple people who, who met my mom and my dad. And uh, I guess as we get older, those, those numbers get smaller and those people from our past uh, mean more to us. So uh, thank you, Giovanna. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read a, a few very short poems. Oh, I'll also say this, since Bianca mentioned um, the Taylor Swift anthology, um, I was also one of the 113 people invited to write for that, and uh, they rejected my poem. Um, <laughs> and uh, I thank you, I'm very proud of that. And uh, it, I was told it was too short. Uh, and that it didn't have any allusions to the Taylor Swift song. And I thought, y yeah, what's the problem? And so I wrote another one, which they loved because I think it had the word babe in it, um, which I have never had in a poem, and it also had Marcus Welby in it, um, which I I'm sure they all have to look up. Um, that's just an aside, oh, because it was a very short poem. Uh, and it went, it, it's, a, it's one of those poems that you really kind of have to see on the page, but the short one goes something like this. Loss. It barely tries to hide inside blossoms. Shepherd. Without my sheep, I'd be lost. Introduction to color. It fades. Contingency. In another life, I'd want this one. Love. It's an extreme sport, like indoor beekeeping. <laughs> Proximity, she died of my wounds. Heaven, it's hell for the girls who loved bad boys. <laughs> we have many lovers of bad boys in the audience. Uh, no judgment. This is called Alcatraz. How quickly one gets from A to Z. How swiftly one says everything there is to see. These bars, for instance, and the flexible fencing of sharks, and how impossibly far it is, this life, from that. called uh, Regarding My Delay. I've been trying on coffins and can't find one with a big enough dance floor. It's a true story. <laughs> Emergency chocolate cake. It's the cake we bake in wartime, without eggs or milk, without flour or chocolate. We bake it without ovens or pans. It's hard to imagine sitting around the bombed out kitchen table, eating it without hands, without a mouth, without saving the recipe for some knucklehead in peacetime, in uniform, gung-ho to reenact everything we went without. Alchemy. 
I don't want gold per se. I want change. Take my bright ingots, dim them, gaze this way, rearrange me. Wrecking ball. Its offices are thin air. On days off, it still goes in. Wrecking balls are workaholics. They hang around up there. And even the idea of big sky crumbles. Everything. Everything was beautiful and nothing hurt, Kurt Vonnegut said. Everything was beautiful and nothing hurt, the girl slurred to the artist at the tattoo parlor. The word made flesh isn't fictional. It's beautiful. It hurts. And... Uh, I think I'm going to read maybe uh, maybe maybe three more poems. Unless you really want thirty, <laughs> but I guess I'll do that instead. <sighs> oh, I want to read this one because it's new. What art can't save. Green stamps, rainwater, a man named Art, dartboards, the flagrance of flowers. I forgot about these. This could take a while. <laughs> Whereabouts? I was deep in a forest. How long? How long? until a forest was deep inside me. It's two more now. This is called Coming Back. Um, a number of you maybe knew the poet Jane Mead, uh, a dear person and a dear poet. And uh, this is a poem written in response to a poem that um, was in the New Yorker after she died, and it's called, I always forget the exact title, but, but I think it's called um, um, Will I Miss the Moss, or I Wonder If I Will Miss the Moss. And uh, this is called Coming Back. I'd want to be moss, she said, moss which greens where grass can't, a softness, a carpet that doesn't fly off, which isn't magical, but simply is where she isn't. And I'll read one more poem. And thank you all for being here. And uh, yeah. Roosevelt, Roosevelt Dargon. Roosevelt Dargon, how often I have thought of you and your leg. You were driving that last stretch of slow road home in snow and ice in the blue Vista Cruiser. What was I, five? When your big rig crashed. We didn't see it happen, but got there right after, before the ambulance and cops, before the snarl of cars that would have kept us from reaching you. I say us, but what I mean is my father, who told my brothers and me, stay here, while my mother toggled between Static and Tommy Dorsey and he ran to the jackknifed cab and found you pinned in there, left leg mostly severed, but tethered enough under the crushed front dash to keep several bigger men from pulling you out. There was a, there was a lot of blood you were losing, and the tumbled lumber and concrete blocks from the load you'd been hauling, and the smashed glass of clean peaches and syrup from the truck you'd swerved into, and all around you, Fuel was pooling, collecting, threatening to catch fire. And I have to imagine that you would have, what you would have heard 
my father's voice, calm and measured, saying, I'm a doctor. He might not have said, a psychiatrist. What he showed you was a Swiss army knife. What he did was ask permission to finish what the accident had started, to cut the tendon cleanly to free you. I guess we never know which part of ourselves we'll have to sacrifice or when we might need to say to a stranger with a pocket knife, I'd be obliged. And that was that. They pulled you out. Someone may have grabbed the mangled leg as an afterthought, but this was 1966, before the age of reattachments. My father knelt in the snow and wiped his knife blade clean. This was before there would be people on the road we could not help, before the next Christmas and the ones after that, when a crate of oranges would come from Baltimore with a card that said, best wishes from the leg and me, Never, never specifying which leg you met, the one you kept, or the one you let go. What the mind keeps, it keeps. I still have my mother humming, I thought about you. Still have my brothers punching each other in the way back. Still have my father still running with his Swiss army, as if he could in some coming blizzard. Save us all.